Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. It's going to be hot today, so I thought, well, I can do a project in the shop, and the project is this. My old Super C hasn't been running in about a month, and the reason is it's got a dead battery, but there's a little more to the story. Here's one of the awesome things about old tractors. These are all the tools I'll need to get started on this job. Pliers, wrenches, you got it, including the one I dropped. First thing I got to do is take the old battery out and... These are a little bit tricky on the Super C's and the Super A's because of the hydraulic controls. Well, come out of there. And then this tractor's got a multi-piece battery box, so I just need to pull this one side off here to get the battery out. And then there's two bolts down here that need to come out to pull the side of the battery box off. You know what? I don't think this battery's got a go handle on it. It doesn't. Oh my gosh. And now I can take the old battery to my friendly neighborhood Napa and get all the other goodies that I need as well as a new battery. Alrighty, let me grab these and I'll explain what's going on. Actually, before I do that, I want to put this battery in temporarily and get it in the shop. And then I'll explain what's going on. This tractor was a positive ground, but we're going to convert it to a negative ground. And even though it's red, this is the ground cable. And I'm just putting these on here temporarily. The terminals need to be cleaned up, but I just want to get it into the shop. This tractor is a 1953 Farmall Super C that I've owned for about 15 years. I, it, was a, it was a birthday tractor, I call it. Neighbor of mine down the road loved this tractor because it was the same age as him. He was born in 1953, but he got a newer tractor and he wanted to move it on down the line. So I bought this Super C with a set of two bottom plows and a sickle bar mower from him and I've used it ever since. It's such a handy little tractor. The, Two-point hitch raises and lowers, which is awesome for hooking up wagons and trailers, and it's just a great tractor. It's just a perfect size. You can see how small it is compared to the MD when it comes in the shop. But this tractor has always had charging problems, and it has the original charging system on it, which consists of a generator and a regulator, and it's a six-volt system. It had a six-volt battery in it. Now before I go any further, I want to show you how this system works because it's really not that complicated. And a lot of old cars and all old tractors have it. All there is in this regulator are two coils here, this coil and this coil, and magnetism generated by these coils makes these points open and close. One of the coils closes when you turn on the ignition switch and it makes a contact and engages the field of the generator with the battery energizing it. The other switch or points will flutter open and close to hold the correct charging voltage on the battery. So for a six volt battery you're talking about around seven volts or so to charge the battery. It can be higher than that but you want at least that. And that's all that happens is when you turn the ignition switch on one set of points closes and then as the tractor's running one is opening and closing to keep the generator charging at the correct rate. In my experience the regulator is always the problem with these systems. There's an easy way to check the generator and all you do is you find the F terminal which is the one back here and you take a piece of of wire or a jumper and you just jump it to ground. Find a ground someplace here, wherever, and jump that F terminal to ground. If you see on the ammeter for your tractor, if you use a voltage meter, you should see the generator go to full charge at that point when you ground it out. That's telling the generator to put out as much as it can. The real problem with these systems is always the regulator. And just like anything else, I think that the ones that are made these days aren't nearly the quality of the old ones. And I've replaced this regulator a couple times. I've fussed with this tractor over the course of 15 years. I've jumpered the generator to charge the battery. I've adjusted the points on the regulator. You can adjust the tension on the springs here and get them to open and close, but it's always been a problem. Just headaches, you know, year after year, I have to fuss with it. 
And that makes it kind of a pain with this tractor because we'll fire this tractor up and use it almost every day to haul a wagon around, short duration trips, haul a wagon full of chickens out to the field, haul chickens into butcher, pick up the firewood wagon, bring it down to the woods. It's a lot of starting and stopping. And on the other side of this tractor, you have a distributor, which International called a battery ignition system to differentiate it from a magneto ignition and a six volt coil. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna convert this tractor to 12 volts. This new battery is a 12 volt battery and I'm going to change the generator over to a one-wire alternator, which is very simple to wire in. I'll show you. You got to disconnect the regulator here so we can take it off. And we're going to keep track of which is the bat wire, which stands for battery. It's labeled on the regulator here. And the bat wire will be the thickest wire coming off of the regulator. You can see, see how much thicker that wire is than that wire? It's probably 12 gauge, I'm not sure. Something like that. Disconnect these wires from the generator. That's my fan running in the background. It is hot both inside and outside today. There's nothing wrong with this generator. I grounded it out before I disconnected everything and it generates just fine. It's the regulator. We'll take the regulator right off of here. There we go. And now for the generator, that's gotta come off. Now for the new alternator, the new <laughs> remanufactured alternator. I always use these one wire Delco alternators and in my experience they're trouble free. This is a remanufactured, I think it's a Delco 10 SI and there's just one wire to connect on the back right here. <laughs> Couldn't be easier. Now as with anything old tractor related, you have choices. This is a 12 volt, as I said, and it cost me, and I didn't have a core to bring back, I think it was about $55. So these are relatively cheap. You can also find six volt alternators. I've seen them a lot online, but the price goes way up when you go to a six volt alternator. I could have put a six volt alternator in here and uh, not had to worry about any of the other battery or anything else on the tractor. 12 volts not difficult to do and you save a lot of money doing it. But probably the most time consuming part of these is you gotta get them to sit in the right place. You gotta get them in plane with the belt. And this old bracket I have here is not gonna work. Now once again, you have choices. You can go online and buy kits that are bracket mounts for these alternators to go on farm malls. It'll get you where you need to be. I've done a bunch of these tractors with alternators and I've always found it easier to just fabricate my own bracket to get it in the right place. Alrighty, so I've been thinking about it and I think I got a couple choices. I can come off of this bolt here and up to the lower mount, but I'm not going to get that kind of restriction in movement from just hooking to one bolt. Or I can take this existing bracket off, it's got to come off anyway and make a new bracket that comes up to the plane that I need it to be in to mount the alternator. And then after that, I'm gonna to have to figure out what to do with the belt tensioning arm on it. Let's pull this hood off so we can get a better look. Everything's so little compared to the MD. So I've got the bottom of the alternator fastened onto the front of the existing bracket and we're going to see how the belt travels here. So I just put a straight edge here between the two pulleys and it looks like I've got them in line. And again, you know, this is a slow running tractor and it doesn't have to be like a race car. I mean, we're only turning a couple thousand RPMs at the very most. So things don't have to be right on. But as far as I can tell, that is right on. Next thing we got to do is deal with the coil because we're changing over to a 12 volt system but the coil is a 6 volt coil, not for a 6 volt system. And the function of the coil is to up the voltage so that you get a spark that jumps the electrode on the spark plug and ignites the fuel mixture. As you can see this original International Harvester coil still works great so I'm not changing it. But since I'm reversing the polarity on the tractor from a positive ground to a negative ground, I have to also change the way the coil's wired 
because if you've got a negative ground, you want the negative side of the coil here going down to the points in the distributor. Now there's something else major that we've got to do here in changing over to a 12 volt system. And that is that we have to mount this doohickey on here. Now this wire right here comes from the switch up at the driver's position of the tractor and turns on energy that goes to the ignition here. Goes to the coil, but I'm changing that and I'm going to run it through this thing. And this thing is a ballast resistor and what it does is it takes a 12 volts that's going to be coming out of the switch now because I have a 12 volt battery and through electrical resistance changed it to 6 volts here and of course the byproduct is heat this gets hot that's why it's ceramic and that 6 volt will go into this 6 volt coil now like I said you got choices and everything I could elect to take this 6 volt coil out and put in a 12 volt quote internally resisted coil which is meant to have 12 volts coming into it even though it's really a 6 volt coil it's got an internal resistor I don't know it's electrical mumbo jumbo suffice to say you need either a true 12 volt coil or 12 volt internally resisted coil or a 6 volt coil with a ballast resistor on the outside on the power that's coming into the coil hey and wouldn't you know it as luck would have it I just happened to find a leftover cable that was made by the Brillman company off of one of my wiring harnesses from the other tractors I've done. This tractor has a Broman wiring harness on it too. That's one of the things I did when I first bought it. And that's it for the work on the coil and distributor. That's all we had to do is put that in. Now at this end of the tractor we've got to take the battery back out because we've got to do a little bit of wiring changing in here having to do with the changeover to an alternator. On a Super C all the wiring is in this box in here and they aren't the easy to get easiest thing to get at but we got to change some stuff around here and this is the point in the process where it's extremely handy to have the wiring diagram that's either in the parts manual or in the operators manual for your tractor here's the one for the super c with battery ignition this is what we were just looking at here inside that switch box and basically what we're doing is we want to disconnect the l terminal cable that came from the regulator because that usually runs up to the ignition switch which is this little circle right here disconnect that and we want to disconnect the lighting switch here because our light bulbs that are in the tractor are 6 volt right now and so they would burn out pretty quickly on 12 volt although they do make 12 volt replacements for these I don't run this tractor at night so we'll just disconnect the switch and then we need to rearrange the wiring a little bit to bring power to the switch that was coming in through the L terminal on the regulator so that this side of the switch when the switch is closed can send power to the coil which is this wire that goes right down here that goes to the ignition coil you got all that there's going to be a test at the end you know I know it's really confusing you got to look at the diagram and then go and look at what you got on any make of tractor that's just the way it goes where am I going to put this so you guys can see I don't know Here's the back of the ignition switch and this is the wire here that runs to the coil and provides power to the coil when the switch is turned to the on position. This wire right here comes from the L terminal of the regulator and then this wire right here goes to the fuse and then the lighting switch. So we got to disconnect this right here. We can just pull this switch right off. It's not that. That's millimeters. What's that millimeters doing in my wrench? I don't need those. And poink. There we go. All right, now we can reach things. Oh, leave that out there. So in review, these two wires got to come off. This one goes to the L terminal of the regulator. We can tape that one off. It's dead on both ends now. This one goes to the fuse, which in turn travels over to the light switch. We're going to leave this one unhooked and taped off because we're not leaving the lights, lights connected for now anyway. And then finally, we need to find a source to put power into the ignition switch from battery. And fortunately, one of those wires on the ammeter comes straight from the battery. Well, it comes from the starter, but it's hooked to the battery 
cable through the starter and into the ammeter. So next we got to draw power from this side of the ammeter here. Let me remind you this come this is hot always coming from the battery and then this one comes from the alternator where the alternator is going to be hooked in so as the alternator ch charges it'll flow across the ammeter and show charge on the ammeter and we're going to hook the power switch right in here so that when the tractor's not running we'll have juice flowing the other way across the ammeter and it'll show draw from the coil. Doesn't really matter that much but I like to see that. And then the other end of this little jumper wire that I made that I just hooked into the ammeter goes to the other side of the ignition switch here to provide power to the ignition switch. And that'll do us for the wiring. I just got to put the ignition switch back in here. Now we can put the battery back in and do some tests to make sure everything's working all right. I'm just going to hook these on temporarily. Here's the positive. Even though it's black, it's positive. I cleaned up these terminals too with one of these doohickeys. Even though this was originally a positive ground tractor, you can go to a negative ground switch polarity. The starter doesn't care. It still spins the same way. It won't spin the other way. So. Converting to negative ground is no problem. And also the battery cables are no problem. Actually, with a 6-volt system, you really want to have larger gauge cables to transfer all that amperage through. When you go to 12 volts, you really don't need the same size cables. I think that these are number 4s. I don't remember exactly. When I'm running 6 volts on a larger engine like the MD, I'll go to 0 or double zero size double up cables. Alrighty, what does the multimeter tell us? First at the battery we've got 12.67 volts. Now we'll switch the switch on, pull it out. There we go. And let's check for juice coming into the coil system or the distributor system. So this is my wire coming in from the ignition switch. We'll make sure we've got power on it. Find a ground here. So we've got 12 volts coming into that. Now remember this is our ballast resistor coming out of the ballast resistor about six volts it's doing what it should this is dad but he didn't really want to be on camera today so i'm going to show you what he made for a mount for this alternator and we're going to test fit it here you can buy these kits online well, i looked at one it was about sixty dollars but dad's labor is a lot less than that so decided to make one instead it's just a plate to bring the alternator up to where we want it so that it can pocket into the tractor better and then the old bracket's been modified to attach to the alternator here. I'm sorry to say that this project beat me today. I thought I was going to finish it today, but I can't. I went to the hardware store to get new belts, both fan belt, main belt here, and then a new alternator belt, which I measured for, and they had neither of them in stock, said they'll be in tomorrow morning. But the bottom bracket is all done. I put a coat of paint on that, so we'll let that dry overnight. And Dad or I still have to fabricate the top bracket, the adjustment bracket that comes off. We're going to have it come off of here and come to the top of the alternator. I guess this one's going to have to be a to be continued. What's the saying? Sometimes you eat the worm and sometimes the worm eats you. Is that the saying? I don't know. It's something like that. Anyway, hopefully my parts will come in tomorrow and I can do a part two and we'll get her running again. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.